Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's video newsletter is going to be why an abundance mindset and infinite patience leads to success with women. So I got a success story. It's Friday, and I'm going to share this with you guys. This particular emailer, he's been following me since he was 17. I assume he was in high school. And he's 22 now, and he's in college. And so he shares... He's also read 3% Man 15 times, or 10 times so far, which, I mean, if he's been following me that long, quite frankly, he should have been through it a little bit more than that, but he's got a great success story to share. Because the guys that do well long-term, they usually go back through the book at least once or twice a year just to keep it fresh. Because, again, I say this a lot, is that whatever you observe, you participate in. And so if you're only observing traditional TV and movies, you're, whether you realize it or not, you're getting propagandized by dysfunctional archetypes and ways that are unnatural to men and women to act. And so the things that I teach are innate, and that's why they feel so natural when you really get it. And so if you're constantly consuming dysfunctional archetypes, even if you've been through the book 10 or 15 times, and then four or five years goes by, it's like you're going to slowly kind of go back to sleep partially and kind of revert because you're going to identify. And the other thing you got to consider is the music, the emotions of the scene, and what's going on with the characters. You get emotionally anchored to thinking and feeling and therefore acting a certain way. So we tend to move towards things that feel pleasurable and away from things that are painful and whether you realize it or not when you consume this dysfunctional nonsense that's piped into our homes and over the airwaves as media you literally can't help but become propagandized and emotionally anchored to dysfunctional ways of being and thinking that are incredibly inefficient and they go against our very nature and what's innate with men and women and so this particular guy he shares a success story of how having an abundance mindset, talking to multiple women, not getting hung up or attached to any one particular girl until he, you notice that she's really into you. And so he shares how he basically got the hottest girl in class who every guy's trying to date and hook up with to date and hook up with him. And for me personally, what I love seeing is that, I mean, this guy started, I mean, I wish I would have had a book like mine in high school. Because there's so many beautiful opportunities that I missed out on as I got older, especially I got in my thir early 30s and I, I connected all these dots. I just thought back on my life over the past 15, 20 years and all the things I missed out just because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And so a guy like this at 17 can read my book and follow along in the videos and go through college and just be killing it on a level that was going to take me personally another 10 or 12 years. So this guy at his age is... 10 or 12 years ahead of where I was in my early 30s. And so I think that's pretty awesome. Because if you start, the earlier you start, the more your life is going to be all about reaching your full potential and experiencing things you've always dreamed of that most people will sit and be observers of. And so the more people that know this stuff and exhibit it, it influences everybody around them. And they influence their friends, they influence the women. And it just presents a much better archetype for those that you surround yourself with because it's healthy, it's innate, and it's natural. And it feels natural when you really embody this stuff and you own it. So he says, hi, Corey, greetings from Europe. I've been following your work for the past five years and I read your book over 10 times. More importantly, though, I've adapted the mindset of respecting myself and value, valuing my time on this planet. One can read the book a hundred times, but if they got nothing going on in their lives and they're not applying the principles, failure is inevitable. Well, you got to give yourself permission to fail because you learn more from failures and things that don't work out than the successes because the su successes can make you cocky and kind of lull yourself to sleep. You get full of yourself. And especially when it comes to business, one of the things you always have to do in business is you always got to innovate. Because if you don't get, if you don't innovate, your competitors are come by and smoke your ass. 
I'm lucky to have found your work as early as age 17, and after years of trial and error and learning through experience at age 22, I feel I've made great progress. Well, success is making progress in life. And so if you're able to look, especially this guy now, he's got five years of history of applying the stuff that's in my book, books and in my videos, and he sees himself making progress and starting to accelerate beyond what his peers are doing. And the word lead means to go first. And when other people see you succeeding at the highest level, you give them, whether you realize it or not, unconsciously, you give them permission and hope to go for what they want in their own lives because they see you doing it. A leader leads by example. I still revisit your material once in a while to keep it fresh in memory. I would say ideally once or twice a year at least. And that's taking your time to really go through the book. I wanted to write in a success story in the making since I think I finally met and bonded with one of those one to three times a decade type of women. In early August, we met on the first day of student orientation as we both began studying law this fall. I noticed her constantly glancing my way, so I walked over and we started talking. The conversation was flowing, and within two hours, she was playing with my ear and rubbing my thigh. They're not even on a date. They just met in class. It's kind of like an instant date happened. As she was looking at my lips, I went in for the kiss. No date. He didn't even have to ask her out. It's just attraction's not a choice. He sees her. She sees him. He doesn't do anything stupid or unattractive. And so her attraction and her interest grows. Interestingly enough, she didn't kiss me back stri- straight away, and she whispered, not on the first day. I teased her about it and just hung back. Less than a half an hour later, I had lipstick all over my face. And that's because he was unattached. He was indifferent. He could take it or he could leave it. He didn't get butt hurt. He wasn't upset. Probably just offered the James Bond smirk, the little smile that Daniel Craig has been so great at. And what happens? woman says, no way I'm sleeping with you. I would never date you if you're the last guy on earth. And he just smirks at her. A little side smile, <laughs> which says, I've heard that like a thousand times before. And what happens? Later in the evening, she's in bed with him. She says, not on the first day, but yet, half an hour later, she's all over him. And he's got lipstick all over his face. On the first week, we had an event every night. I made a lot of friends and therefore talked to many other girls too. Every night at some stage, she would put herself in my orbit, so I really didn't have to work at all. And unsurprisingly, the Indoor Olympics happened later that week. I'm shocked. See how easy that is? I mean, this is natural. This is the way things are supposed to work when two people like each other. And when you consume all this bullshit that's on TV and the movies, it just gets in the way of what's natural and beautiful between human beings. During the first few weeks, we saw each other a lot, but I kept the vibes playful and I let her do almost all the pursuing since her attraction was a seven to eight on a scale of one to 10. However, during a dinner event one night, she pulled me to the side and said, she thinks we're moving too fast and and that she's not ready for anything serious. You're going to be indifferent. You're not going to be bothered. You're not going to be upset. You're not going to be alarmed. You're going to be amused. You're going to be enchanted. Again, the smirk. We've all heard it before, right? And then what happens? (laughs) I kept being playful and polite, but pulled back a little. I didn't attend as many gatherings and didn't initiate texting either. I went on a couple of dates with other girls. So what happened was they met and... This girl is probably hooking up with this guy faster than anybody she's ever met. And it's moving fast and she's a little freaked out about it because it's happening so quickly. Emotionally, it feels right. But mentally, this doesn't seem right. This never happens like this. Needless to say, one day I got the, hey, (laughs) text... I mean, this is in Europe. It's like women all over the world, they do the same shit, which is amazing. They could, they could be speaking a different language. Hey, in their other language. I got the hey text from a girl in my class, and I set up a date. 
So she basically, oh, we're moving too fast. And it's like, all it means is, oh, I'll just pump the brakes a little bit. I'm not going to get mad. I'm not going to get butthurt. I'm not going to be alarmed. I'm amused. I'm enchanted. And it's my signal to make sure I'm talking to some other ladies because maybe there's another girl who I click with, maybe even on a better level because these things tend to go in twos and threes. When you meet one like this, shortly thereafter, you meet one or two more. That's It's always been like that. It's just like getting a speeding ticket. You get one speeding ticket, then it seems like you get one or two more shortly thereafter, and then you go years without any infractions. It's just kind of weird how the universe works. You go through a dry spell, then you meet one girl, and then another girl, and then another girl within a matter of days or a couple of weeks. And if you've done the work ahead of time, as Confucius said, success depends upon prior preparation. And without said preparation, there is sure to be failure. So he spent five years practicing the material. So when he meets this girl, it's just easy and effortless. She's Feminine energy is chaos. She's freaking out a little bit about how she feels and how things are moving. And he's just, eh. He just goes and spends time with other girls and other people. He's not alarmed. He knows you'll be back. The kitty cat will return when it misses him. We did the three H's and from there her attraction has been rising steadily for the past month. Once again, the state of abundance has helped me navigate through this whole process and it feels great to be sleeping with perhaps the most beautiful girl in our class. Well, it's your birthright, my man. This is how it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be a once in a lifetime event or something that just never happens or that only happens in the movies. It's like if you know what you're doing and you get your shit together and your game is tight and you're totally in your masculine, you will make women fall at your feet and turn into butter. They'll be putty in your hands in a good way. Obviously, she has a lot of other guys hitting on her. But in the early 20s age bracket, there's not much competition for a three percenter. I mean, this guy's been practicing for five years. Whether this evolves into a relationship or not isn't my main focus. Remember, as the book says, your job is just to create an opportunity for sex to happen. Hang out, have fun while you're hanging out, and hook up when the signs are there that she's ready to be touched, ready to be kissed, ready to be seduced. It'll be easy and effortless and it'll feel totally natural and this is what makes your confidence as a man explode i'm living my purpose and having great experiences thanks to your work and my own efforts to improve once again thank you for the work you do bob p.s trump 2024 and for those of you guys we got to vote you got to get your ass off the fucking couch. What's interesting is women tend to vote more than men. And so if you're watching this, you need to move your fucking ass. And come election day, you need to go vote. You don't get what you deserve in life. You only get what you negotiate. And if you sit on your ass, as the, uh, I can't remember who said it, but the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. And part of the problem with elections is men just typically don't move their ass and vote. So if you care about the country and you want to have good people running the country and not a cackling fool, get off your ass and go vote because it does matter. And that, if, you, if we have enough people voting and the margin for victory is big enough, then whatever kind of cheating or shenanigans or fraud that's going on it happens in every election but it's just too much to make up with fraud so move your ass go vote i've been ride or die with trump since he came down that escalator in june i've talked about the covid stuff wasn't happy about that at all he turned the country over to fauci and dr burks and the rest of these ass clowns but i'm really excited about bobby kennedy getting involved really super excited about elon musk getting involved and it's like a once in a lifetime opportunity to really shrink the government and get rid of a lot of incompetent people that don't belong there that are just gumming up the works and getting in the way and making life hell 
for the rest of us. So move your ass. So if you got a question or a challenge and you want to get my help, go to understandingrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen on any page on my website and book a coaching session with yours truly. And if you guys haven't already signed up for our paying members only content, in the description of this video, there are links to where you can join on YouTube to consume our exclusive members only content, or you can watch it on or listen to it on Spotify if you choose, if you prefer Spotify. And ideally, we would love it if you would consume the members only content on our website, understandingrelationships.com. Just click the plans tab when you at the top of your screen on any page when you get there and so on the website we've got a seven day free trial so you can check out what kind of content you get for your money or i say what extra content you get for your money you can do a monthly plan or an annual plan and if you choose an annual plan you also get a 25 percent discount for paying the whole year up front and so what you get is you get five additional paid members only video newsletters similar to this one obviously on the website you get the email analysis but if you just want to watch videos or or just listen to the, I would say if you only want to watch videos, YouTube is good for that. Spotify is good for that. If you like to just listen to them, I'd say I, Spotify is probably your best bet. It's going to give you the best experience. Because of the paywall that's on YouTube, you really can't. If your screen goes to sleep, the video will stop playing. And I don't have any control over that. That's just the way YouTube's system works. But you also, we also do a weekly, we have a class on 3% Man and we have a weekly class on Mastering Yourself where we literally go page by page in both books. It's like I said, it's a weekly class. We get to the end of the book, we start over, we go back. We're going to be having, we have viewer questions that people send in where they ask a specific page or paragraph in the book or and ask for clarification or examples or whatever. So it's like an ongoing weekly class that we really go in depth in both what's in 3% Man and what's in Mastering Yourself. So definitely go sign up to our members area. Again, you can do this free free trial. Seven-day free trial doesn't cost you anything. And you can see what you get for your money. Plus, you get access to obviously all the other hundreds of videos that we got that are members only on the website. And they're also on YouTube and on Spotify. And we also do the full viewer questions podcast. And sometimes we do special videos. Like a couple weeks ago, we published one on the Menendez brothers trial, which that was a really interesting one. The girls were really into that. And so it was pretty fascinating to learn all this stuff that was part of the case that I never heard back in the late 80s, early 90s when this incident happened and went to trial. It's just, you know, especially now with Twitter and the fact that most people don't really trust the media and seeing how much they constantly lie and misrepresent things and and take clips out of context like the most recent one like the 60 minutes where they changed some of the answers or edited some of the answers of kamala harris to make her look better i mean this is supposed to be a news organization and so these guys are trying to get her elected and they're committing fraud in the news they're selectively editing clips to make her answer look better than it was. And I think Donald Trump's now suing CBS for like $10 billion or something like that. And when they do stuff like that, then they're shocked that we don't believe their media anymore. It's like you destroyed your credibility with constant lying. And so it's just like I said, the Menendez thing, there's so many other things in the case that I never heard, I never knew about extenuating circumstances and testimony from other relatives and family members it's like if all that stuff had been broadcast in the 80s and the 90s i think the public's perception would have been completely different but what's amazing now versus like when i was young i was basically a kid back then is is how different my perception is of reality and it just makes you look back in history and go what else is bullshit what else didn't actually happen that the media has told us was what happened i mean that's kind of crazy to think about that you know history is written by the victors but how much of what we believe about what's going on and historical events over the course of our lives is true and how much of it is bullshit that's just that's amazing to me that's what i love about twitter is that i've seen joe biden and his post stuff on twitter and then within an hour or two it gets community noted 
and called out with links and proof that what they tweeted was total BS, and then they take it down. In the past, they would put that stuff up and nobody in the media fact checks everything because they're all pretty much Democrats and they're trying to help their, their side win. It's just like you can't solve problems in the world unless you can talk openly and honestly about them. And if the media is mass lying to people because they're biased, because they're trying to help their team win, it's, that's just unconscionable. And, you know, they're getting what they deserve. I mean, Jeff Bezos just came out with the Washington Post and said, we're not endorsing anybody. And on top of that, we're going to hire conservative opinion people because they've realized that despite all the propaganda and all the hysteria in the media, the majority of the country supports Trump. Isn't that interesting? And so what they're all coming to realize is that most of the people are just tuning them out. They're not even listening to them or giving any credibility to the stuff that they claim because so many times they pushed hoaxes like the Russia hoax, the Russia collusion hoax. I mean, if you looked at the Durham, Durham investigation, the Horowitz investigation, even the, um, oh, who's the guy, the former FBI guy, the special counsel, the Mueller investigation, it's, there's nothing there. It was all Hillary Clinton's campaign she hired a former British intelligence agent, Christopher Steele, and he put this BS dossier with all kinds of unverified stuff, and the media presented it like it was the truth. And then you got all these people like Brennan and Comey, who was the former director of the FBI, knowing that it was all BS and never and Barack Obama, Joe Biden, and then they just pushed the lie, even though it's documented that they all knew what the truth was. And they just looked the other way because, hey, it was gonna, it, they were trying to help Hillary win. They didn't care about lying. They thought they were doing the right thing by lying because we couldn't handle the truth. That's just unconscionable. And if you're trying to make intelligent, informed decisions and all you're being or getting is propaganda and BS, it's like, that's just so disappointing to find out. So I think one of the greatest things that Elon Musk will be remembered for is the fact that he bought Twitter and he opened it up. Because if you want to understand what's going on in the world, that's the best place to be. That's the best place to get credible information. And things that are posted on there that turn out to be BS, it gets community noted. And so it's like the mass of people that are on there can call the people out in the media when they post their hoaxes. And then they take the stuff down. Whereas before, it would just get pushed. And that's all we hear when we would end up believing bullshit. Anyways, I digress. Thanks for listening to my little rant. Go sign up for our members-only content. Again, the links are in the video description or just go to understandingrelationships.com and click the plans tab when you get there. Until next time, I will talk to you soon. (laughs) 